Whenever you come across YouTube channels that are dedicated to covering board game Kickstarters, just like this one, it's very easy to feel like every video that's on their channel is just really, really positive and that there's no negative responses or reactions to the games that they're covering. Today, I wanna to flip the table on that because I'm gonna go through all of the Kickstarters that I've backed over the years that I actually canceled my pledge on before the campaign ended. And I'm gonna tell you why I did it. Because my name's Sam, this is Should You Back It, and I'm here to help you crowdfund with confidence. So I think it's really important to mention right at the start that just because uh, we cancel a pledge to a Kickstarter doesn't necessarily always mean that we thought the game was going to be bad. Uh, there's a ton of reasons why we cancel our pledges. It can be financial, it can be really we just realised that we don't need that game in our collection. There's tons of them and I'm, I'm, you're probably going to see quite a few different reasons as to why a lot of these pledges uh, were cancelled. I think the important thing to remember at all times is that just because I've cancelled a pledge for a board game does not mean that it was a bad game. Equally, this is a continuation of a little series of videos I've been doing recently. Um, you can check them out. I think they're up here. Um, no, I don't think that's right. Maybe they're up here. They're, they're up there somewhere. Uh, so if you want to see five Kickstarters I've backed that I absolutely love, you can check that video out. And recently, I just did a video of every Kickstarter I ever backed rank them and where they are in my collection today. And the first one uh, dates back to 2015 uh, and it was for Collapse, a deck building game of doomsday prepping. This was a real surprise to me uh, whenever I went through this list of Kickstarters I've cancelled because I have no memory of this one. <laughs> um, I have equally done some research on it since uh, for, in preparation for this video. Um, it, it, it's got a 6.2 on Board Game Geek. Uh, you cannot pre-order it, you basically can't find it if you go to the link of their website, it goes to some strange Chinese site that's not secure, all very bizarre. Uh, safe to say, I think this, this game is, is gone. Uh, it did deliver to backers. Um, I think for me, love post-apocalyptic themes, that's probably what drew me in, uh, but I just wasn't a deck building fan and once I started to realize what a deck builder was at this time of my board game journey, I just realized it wasn't for me uh, and canceled the pledge. The next Kickstarter whose pledge I canceled uh, was for the Walking Dead All Out War miniatures game. I know it's not technically a board game, but I'm classing it as, as part of this space. I was I'm gutted that I canceled this pledge. I ended up picking up the game regardless and I have quite a, uh, I think I've almost got everything for the Walking Dead All Out War miniatures game. Sole reason for cancelling this was because this was like the most expensive Kickstarter I had gone in for at the time. Uh, I think I backed the $125 pledge um, and at the time I was just starting, this was, when was this? I think this was around maybe 2015, 2016 as well um, and around that time I was just starting to get kind of regular full-time, semi full-time work and so dropping that amount of money uh, in a month was it was just scary and I, I waited up until the last minute and very begrudgingly cancelled this pledge um, was really disappointed that I had to but I had bills to pay and it made more sense to do that as opposed to, to backing a Kickstarter um, but fantastic game they did lose the license um, I think a couple of years ago they've just announced that they're bringing it back in some shape or form so very excited uh, to get back into that. But yeah, Walking Dead All Out War miniatures game, fantastic game, canceled the plays due to financial reasons, was gutted and picked up when it came to retail. The next one I canceled my pledge for was God Tier. Uh, this was uh, solely canceled for self-awareness. Um, I love miniatures uh, and Game, board games with miniatures in them are a real Achilles heel for me. So when I saw God Tier with cool minis, it was like, oh yeah, for sure, back this, this is amazing, fantastic. As the campaign went on, I when I backed it and I, I locked in my pledge uh, during the campaign, I did crap all reading as to what the game was about. So after I pledged, uh, while there was still time left in the campaign, you're getting to that time of the month again where you're starting to figure out, well, do I have finances to drop like an additional 79 quid or whatever on, on, a, on a game? The chosen pledge, the core pledge was uh, 79 pounds on this. And as I started to read through it, it just didn't really seem like it was something that I would end up getting to the table very often. Again, that game seems to have done well. 
Um, it seems like there is a solid community around it. I've never wanted to go near it since the Kickstarter campaign, so in, it doesn't mean it's a bad game, it just means I was right in thinking this isn't a game for me um, and saved my money. The next one, there was a couple of cancelled projects, so I had backed Hard City, the board game, uh, at $99. They cancelled the campaign, they did run it again uh, and hit their goal, but I didn't pledge for the rerun of the campaign. Again. It was a case of, I thought the setting looked really cool, it had minis, common theme, and this, this will be a common theme as we go through, but just realised I'm being drawn in by the minis more than the actual game and the mechanics and everything else, so chose to not jump back in when they, when they relaunched that campaign. Anno Domini 1666, again, saw that there was a ton of minis, backed it, without reading about what the game was about or reading anything about how the game played or doing any form of research there was just there was a lot of minis it looked cool that'll be fun to paint those uh, and for 89 dollars uh, not including shipping and all that other, other stuff it's a lot of money to drop on something that you're really just wanting a few minis to paint and there's a lot cheaper ways to do that uh, so i think i cancelled this pledge within maybe 48 hours Again, I've gotten better at this, but for me, there, especially when I started kind of seeing Kickstarter games and, and backing things on Kickstarter, there, there was there was a lot of impulse backing. And I'm sure a lot of you kind of relate to this as well, where you're scrolling through Kickstarter, you see a cool image on, on a Facebook group or a Facebook ad or whatever it is, and you, it, it just looks really cool. You click through, you see minis, uh, you see something that's like under a hundred pounds, you're like, I'll back that. Over the years, I've done a better job of resisting that just impulse back and actually doing a bit more research, reading up about what the game is like and the gameplay and all that kind of stuff. And actually deciding, is this a game that I actually think I would enjoy to play? Or am I just backing this because there's a lot of really nice minis? If it's really nice minis, don't back it, Sam. Find those minis elsewhere and just put them into one of the miniature games that you actually are playing regularly. Uh, the next one was Darkest Dungeon, <laughs> the board game. This was a real save in, with the benefit of hindsight. Um, I, so, play the video game a little bit. I, I suck at it. I'm awful at the video game, but I occasionally will play a little bit of it because I, I, it's just it's really cool. I enjoy it. It's very fun. Deeply frustrating. I suck at it. So, that's why I only play it for a little stint uninstall it, come back to it about six months to a year later, play it for a little bit more, rage quit, uninstall, and I repeat the cycle. So when I saw that Mythic were doing Darkest Dungeon, the board game, um, and bear in mind contextually, I had received Super uh, Fantasy Brawl and Wright Busters at this point. So uh, from my perspective, they were delivering games uh, and everything was going fine. When they announced the Darkest Dungeon, the board game campaign, there was other games I have in my collection that were also like this. Uh, and I thought, well, I enjoy those games, so I'll probably enjoy this too. Uh, but I just felt uneasy about it, uh, where it was like, Sam, if you're honest with yourself, are you actually going to play this? So I, I decided to sit down and watch, I think it was Quackalope's gameplay video of, of Darkest Dungeon. Um, and I think through that realized, oh, this seems a bit clunky. I, uh, I don't think I, I, I don't think this is going to work. The minis are fantastic. Love the minis. But again, if the gameplay is not solid and it's I, the gameplay is not drawing me in, I, I shouldn't go anywhere near this. Um, and cancelled the pledge. I've saved a lot of money not backing this game, which uh, it, it's yeah. Just seeing what's been happening to Mythic is just, is shocking. Um, because if I had backed the hundred and fifty dollar pledge. Uh, I mean, I, I know that there are some people who have backed Rainbow Six Siege uh, and Darkest Dungeon who maybe put in a, was it like, like 150 or 300 dollars, are now over a, a, like a thousand dollars given to Mythic Games in order to get their game, and some of them still don't have it. Um, it's 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 insane. It's absolutely insane. Incredibly glad I I did not follow through and actually keep this pledge. Um, it's a real shame. Uh, I would love to, I do keep an eye on the second hand market to try and pick this up, um, just so I can check it out. 
but yeah, very glad I, I did not back this one. Uh, the next one I uh, cancelled was Alba, uh, an open world adventure book. Again, it was, it's from inside the box, dodged a bullet on this one as well because it, it never fulfilled. This is the reason why this, this channel exists because Ben, who I play board games with, I had mentioned to him about Alba and, and like it looked fantastic, it looked really cool, stunning book, really nice artwork, um, very, very interesting. It's like a choose your own adventure, um, choose your own adventure book, which drew me in. And I'd mentioned it to Ben. Ben also thought it was really cool. He backed it. I backed it. I cancelled my pledge because again, Sam, are you actually are you just backing this because it looks cool? Or are you actually going to use this? And I, I didn't know if I was actually going to use it, so cancelled the pledge. Um, ben went in for I think the £12 pledge. Uh, apparently the, it never existed. Um, or not in its complete form. There were elements of it done, but it, the, a, a finished version never existed. Um, but Ben got burned on that. So I felt responsible because I'd recommended this campaign to him or, or introduced him to it. And he had backed it based on that recommendation. And because of that recommendation, he then lost money. Uh, so it, for me, it was a real wake up moment of flip. I've got to be really careful about what games I suggest and, and um, recommend to other people because our words carry weight. Yeah. It, like if I had recommended somebody to back Darkest Dungeon and Rainbow Six Siege, they could be out like a couple of thousand pounds by now, uh, which is scary. And so I started this channel to kind of review things from a backer's perspective and um, do some research on the background of, of uh, companies and their campaigns to kind of see um, if a game is safer to back. Hand to hand Wombat, Impulse back, um, and cancelled it very, very quickly. So this is by the same company that made Exploding Kittens. Uh, I saw this as being a fantastic game for me to get for family game nights at Christmas. Um, and then realized that's a stupid idea, Sam. This is probably gonna to come to retail, but also um, it's a Kickstarter. So I'm backing this to get it for Christmas. It's not gonna be here for Christmas. So you're backing it for Christmas like a year and a half away. Just go and find a different game to bring the family game night at Christmas. Uh, so impulse back that I very quickly canceled. Tiny Epic Crimes. Um, this is I I almost I did I I don't think I did a video on this this year. Uh, I did have it written, but I, I didn't end up posting it. I think interesting concept. Love the setting. We have other games that are similar that that do what this do what this game does. Um, and just decided, no, I, I ended up backing other things that month instead. Uh, and so didn't want to overextend myself. Uh, and so for financial reasons, canceled the pledge. Apex Legends, the board game. Uh, this was a tough one. I was very tempted by this. Why did I cancel Apex Legends? I think I watched bits of gameplay and it just seemed strange. Uh, again, miniatures look cool. Artwork was, it all looks very cool, but whenever it came down to the substance, it just seemed strange. I think when I when I backed it, it was more so a feeling of, I don't know why this isn't just a skirmish game. Like, I don't, why is it a board game? It should just be a miniature skirmish game. And I think I was backing this, hoping that it would play and be like more of a miniature skirmish game. And it just, it, it wasn't. And so, uh, yeah, it canceled the pledge. Um, again, because we're now in the era of the pledge amount is not the full amount that you'll pay for a game because there's also going to be VAT and there's also going to be shipping. So your pledge is, is going to at least double. And so for me, again, there were other things that I wanted to back and just decided this, this, this isn't on the list. Uh, and I need to instead back games that I think I'm actually going to play um, and not just get drawn in by the, the flash and pomp uh, of the minis. But Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice Apocalypse is the last one on Kickstarter that I cancelled. Um, I'm, I'm really gutted about this. I need to be careful I don't get too mad, but uh, I did not want to cancel my pledge, but I had to cancel my pledge because Triton Noir would not ship to Northern Ireland, even though they will ship to the rest of the United Kingdom, just not us. Uh, and that was what made me really pissed off about it. So I have Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice, love the game, 
um, was super excited when they said they were coming out with an expansion and backed, I, backed straight away, was very quickly um, in there with my pledge uh, and was happy pledging because enjoy the game, hear for more content, um, new setting, all that kind of stuff, very exciting, wanted to support the company um, and get more content for the game that I enjoy. Uh, and then uh, I think, I can't remember what sparked it, but I was going through the campaign again, um, not maybe about halfway, three quarters of the way through, uh, I think I just wanted to double check, oh, what's the shipping amount, what's my total cost gonna be on this? Uh, and was checking um, to see what their shipping to the UK was. And um, just so we're clear, Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. Then there's the Republic of Ireland. Um, so we are in the UK, just for just for clarity. Um, and so there's like the little asterisk and they just said, yeah, we're shipping to the UK, but not Northern Ireland which, um, so I, I, I jumped into the comments of the campaign just to clarify and they were like, yeah, no, it's, uh, I can't remember if they, what was it they'd said? I think they had said that it was either, I, th I think they had said that their uh, fulfillment company that they've partnered with uh, for the UK and EU didn't ship to Northern Ireland, um, which, or, or that it was too expensive. I don't want to say something that they actually didn't say, but it was, it was either that it was too expensive to ship to Northern Ireland uh, or it was too difficult or too much paperwork or that the company didn't ship. It was one of the plethora of kind of standard reasons that those of us who live in Northern Ireland have been getting post-Brexit as to why people just won't ship to us. The company that they were using were GamesQuest who shipped to Northern Ireland. They uh, handle shipping for a ton of campaigns uh, and they also handle shipping for Modifius Entertainment who I get a lot of stuff from. They ship to Northern Ireland. It's not an issue um, and it is possible and if Games Quest are charging them an extortionate amount to ship to Northern Ireland, that's really shitty. Um, but it, it should have been possible. So I had to cancel my pledge on that because they just sh simply would not ship it to me. Um, I've been really peeved off about that. Um, just because it, it just touches on, it's it's not necessarily Triton Noir's fault, it's because their, their choice in doing that is stepping on a nerve that's being created by a ton of other stuff. Do you know what I mean? Um, but if they're shipping to the UK, they should ship to all of the UK. So those are all of the Kickstarter campaigns that I have backed and then cancelled my pledge on. Some of them for very valid reasons, some of them for reasons outside of my control. But what are some of the campaigns that you have backed and cancelled your pledge on? And do you have any dodged bullets like I had with Darkest Dungeon? Let me know down in the comments below. But until next time, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you all soon.